should we bend over backwards for idiots? Fucking let them go. You're not helping anyone. You're thick as pig shit. <laughs> Mind the gap. If you need help with that, if you're thinking, I want to be in the gap, let them go. <laughs> Just means there'll be one fewer person on Love Island. That's all that means. <laughs> trainers the other day there was a sachet inside the trainers that honestly said silica gel do not eat who the fuck <laughs> is that? are there really people going oh trainer pudding <laughs> oh, it's naughty bubbles isn't it it's naughty bubbles <laughs> We no longer sell curved croissants in our largest supermarket because enough people wrote to Tesco complaining that they struggle putting jam on curved croissants. <laughs> that is a thing. We were defeated by bendy bread. <laughs> I've just been Tesco not being funny, but I was going like that, and suddenly there was jam on the table. <laughs> Some people can't eat bananas. Where's it going? Where's it going? <laughs> the world is so depressing, you know? Like my little cousin, this, you know, this killed me the other day. He went to the zoo. He was given a note from his school of what to do in the event of an ISIS attack at the zoo. He's 11. He's excited. You can't even go to the fucking zoo now without being terrified. And do you know the advice that his teachers gave him? He said on this note, run or hide. Cheers, guys. <laughs> what did they think he was going to do? Shit, it's like he says, come by, Come by, Let's fight them with Christian love. Come by, <laughs> It's awful, isn't it? I wasn't afraid of ISIS. I grew up in the 90s. What were the big fears in England in the 90s? Eating red berries off the side of the road. <laughs> Chinese burns. Wedgies. Leaning back on your chair at school. <laughs> Do you remember those weird rumours? Don't lean back on your chair, Russ. There was a boy that did it once and now he's spastomicated. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's how you say it. That's how he says it now. <laughs> Girls running up to you in the playground. Pick a number, pick a colour, and a pick a number. <laughs> what origami nonsense is this, Sarah? <laughs> number! Three, one, two, three. Colour! Red, R, E, D. You're a dick. <laughs> We've got a school with our names sewn into our clothes. Your underwear, that was the most baffling. There was never going to be a moment in the middle of geography. I've got to get my balls out, boys, I tell you what. <laughs> I fucking <laughs> love erosion. I've got to set my sack free. <laughs> but the only time you would remove your pants at school would be if you shat yourself, and then the last thing you'd want is something that linked it back to you. <laughs> Some shitty pants here. It says Russell Joseph Howard. <laughs> Hit him with recorders. <laughs> I wasn't afraid of ISIS, I was afraid of my little brother, little bastard. We started a thing called the landline, do you remember that? It was a phone in the kitchen and a phone upstairs. We always forgot about that one, didn't we? We thought we were having a private conversation. We weren't. The rest of our family were listening into everything we said. <laughs> Every time we used to speak to a girl, my brother would be on the top phone making this noise. <laughs> What are you doing, Russell? I'm not doing anything. He's wanking. He's wanking. He's wanking. <laughs> I'd run upstairs to punch him in the face. I wasn't allowed. He had epilepsy, the selfish little bastard. <laughs> I had to get a lamp and go like that. <laughs> but that's what you should be doing when you're 11. Trying to give your brother an epileptic fit. <laughs> But this note went on. I don't know whether this is the saddest thing or the funniest thing I've ever read. He's 11. He's going to the zoo. This is the note he got from his school. If you do spot a terrorist, tell the teacher. 
I swear to God it said this, do not attempt to negotiate. <laughs> wow! Can you imagine that? Just some ISIS just kneel before a ISIS flag. <gasps> Nathan! <laughs> negotiate! <laughs> just some kid from Bristol like that. <laughs> What's all this first? What's my name? It's Nathan, mate. It's written on my pants. <laughs> What's your name? Cos you sound Spaston McKeeter. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want? What do I want? I want to burn down this zoo, overthrow your government, and fly my flag above the Houses of Parliament! Oh. Do you want a Mars bar? He's <laughs> got the Mars bar, what do you think? No one asked me, yo. What am I saying? No one asked me, yo. What am I saying? Shut up. No, okay, we're all agreed. I'm not just, okay, okay, shut up. Okay, fine, no. Do you have a Kit Kat? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> have we got any Kit Kats? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't realise we were going to be infiltrated. <laughs> All we got left is a Twix. <laughs> Fucking snap it in halfway. <laughs> These goat fuckers don't know what a Kit Kat is. <laughs> Let's negotiate. Before I give you this Kit Kat, we're going to settle it the old-fashioned way. The Bristol way. The children's way. I need you to tuck your willy between your legs. <laughs> Must be so hard being young, you know? Do you ever think about that? I grew up in the 90s. We didn't have social media. All we had to do was develop a personality. <laughs> Whereas kids now, you've got to develop a brand. Trouble is, that's tricky. You know, you've got to convince the world you're more interesting than you are. And the trouble is, you're not. <laughs> because you haven't become you yet. We wonder why kids are anxious the world over. Imagine that. Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, every thought, every picture, every moment, online, judged. We wonder why they're frazzled to shit. We didn't have that. What do we do in the 90s? Fuck all. <laughs> Mostly, we sat on walls thinking. That was it. <laughs> sat on a wall. Slowly becoming myself. No one attacking my still growing brain. <laughs> Luckily, I've been born with a lazy eye and the ability to only breathe through my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Marie. My mum's picking me up at five. <laughs> she rock up at about seven, my mum, just at home eyeing him. Fucking leave him there, Dave. He does my bloody head in. <laughs> Don't be daft, he's a funny-looking kid. No paedophile's gonna go near him. <laughs> to be honest, he talks so much, never have time to get their cock in his mouth. <laughs> Not a joke, that is a direct quote. <laughs> I was always safe. Just some bloke pulling up in a car. Get in, thank you very much. In a car with a bad man. <laughs> I would point out, if you're gonna bang me in the woods, I've got hay fever. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Always talking myself out of a deal. <laughs> it's very different now. That's what I'm trying to say. I've been hanging around a lot of schools. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got that wrong. I've been filming them. I've been interviewing them. I've been interviewing. I've been interviewing kids for a, a TV show that I'm doing. The stuff I've learned. Fuck me. Do you know 40% of the kids that we've spoken to, when they lose their virginity, they film it? Yes, that is the correct response! <laughs> Who is that confident losing their virginity? Sarah, just lie there. You're going to be here for quite a while. Camera one, are you focused? <laughs> Camera two, are you ready? Vision, sound. OK, everybody, let's make a motion picture! <laughs> I've come. <laughs> Yeah. 
If you filmed me, it would have been horrendous. Am I doing it right? Is it going well? Thank you so much for this opportunity. <laughs> I'm having a lovely day out. I really have a huge fucking pollen count. <laughs> I'm too big, aren't I? I'm too big. I don't want to hurt you. That's the last thing I want to do. I don't want... I'm not in. I didn't realise. I didn't realise. <laughs> Turn off the cameras. I didn't realise. <laughs> Filming it, man. It's because we learn through porn and kids are trying to emulate porn stars. It's fucked. We're obsessed with porn in this country. I saw a teenage boy the other day watching porn on the train. He wasn't touching himself, he was just watching it. Who the fuck watches <laughs> porn for the stories? Just... <laughs> oh, I knew they was gonna get together. <laughs> it's like Ross and Rachel, innit? <laughs> and it gets weirder. 32% of boys, I found this out, I was reading about it in the papers, when they lose their virginity, they come on the girl's face because they think that's what they're meant to do. It isn't, you fucking mongrels! <laughs> You're going to cherish her, not make her look like she's got the flu on a trampoline. <laughs> Don't copy porn! I didn't lose my virginity dressed as a German plumber. <laughs> And I can feel you looking at me, and there's probably people at home watching, thinking, well, you've changed the evening. It's quite a hideous image. <laughs> there may be some people in this room that have come as a family. That's going to be a fairly tricky car journey home. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Boy in the back. I'd like to point out, Mum, I've never spaffed on any girl's face. <laughs> I didn't even know what spaffing was until he started going about it. <laughs> 